80 million years ago, two dinosaurs, a crested protoceratops and a sharp-clawed velociraptor fought to the death. Somehow, as they died in the sands of the Gobi Desert, their battle was frozen in time. The Velociraptor flat on its back, its clawed arm caught in the jaws of the Protoceratops. An extraordinary fossil. A mysterious glimpse of life and death in the age of dinosaurs. For more than 150 million years, dinosaurs roamed every corner of the planet. Only a very few left evidence of their existence, their fossilized bones. And those bones never cease to fascinate us. Dinosaurs came in amazing shapes and sizes. Some were the largest animals ever to walk the earth. Paleontologists, the scientists who study prehistoric life, are discovering more dinosaurs now than ever before. And this fossil evidence is allowing them to reconstruct not only their strange skeletons, but also their lives. An example is this gigantic long-necked plant eater known as Seismosaurus. Found in New Mexico, it lived during the Jurassic period, 150 million years ago, when many dinosaurs grew to unprecedented size. Seismosaurus means earth-shaking lizard and there's no doubt that its footsteps echoed across the Jurassic landscape. Measuring 110 feet from nose to tail, it is one of the longest dinosaurs ever discovered. Strangely, when it was excavated, some 240 smooth round stones were found in and around its huge stomach cavity. Some scientists believe Seismosaurus swallowed stones to help its digestion. Others say that finding the stones was a coincidence, that they were part of the riverbed where Seismosaurus was found. Seismosaurus weighed over 30 tons, as much as eight elephants and must have consumed hundreds of pounds of vegetation every day. Sometimes scientists can even learn what dinosaurs ate from clues they left behind in their fossilized dung. Dinosaurs were first discovered in Europe and America but in the 20th century, scientific explorers struck out for the most remote corners of the Earth. And the full extent of the dinosaur kingdom began to be revealed. The Gobi Desert spans a half million square miles of Mongolia and China, the ancient land of Chinggis Khan. Beneath sands that camel caravans traversed for centuries lay a vast treasure trove of fossils, undisturbed for more than 70 million years that would forever change our view of dinosaur life. In the 
1920s, a team of scientists from the American Museum of Natural History set out to explore the little-known Gobi. Their leader was Roy Chapman Andrews. Andrews and his team traveled in a fleet of automobiles. It was one of the first major expeditions to use motorized transport in Central Asia. To keep his expedition supplied, when the nearest gas station was a thousand miles away, he came up with a novel plan, sending out camel caravans in advance, loaded with food and fuel. And the camels provided an unexpected service to the expedition. Hair plucked from their shedding winter coats was ideal for packing fragile fossils. Mongolia was a dangerous place, full of roving bandits. But Andrews, thought to be the inspiration for Indiana Jones, reveled in the adventure of it all. Never again will I have such a feeling as Mongolia gave me. All this thrilled me to the core. Somewhere in the depths of that vast, silent desert lay those records of the past that I had come to seek. Andrews fended off the bandits, but he and his team could not avoid the violent sandstorms that often sweep across the Gobi. To their amazement, they found that each new storm uncovered a wealth of bones, dinosaur bones never before seen and perfectly preserved in the desert sands. Mark Norell and Mike Novacek of the American Museum of Natural History, following in Andrew's footsteps, have been leading expeditions to the Gobi every year since 1990. by dinosaurs in their youth, Mike and Mark have become renowned paleontologists. They've dug dinosaurs all over the world, but they've made their most spectacular finds here in the Gobi Desert. Dr. Julia Clark has arrived in Mongolia's capital, Ulaanbaatar, with graduate students Alan Turner and Amy Balanoff to prepare for this year's expedition. Yeah, this is... We're walking over to the temple, right? They are part of a team that will join Mike and Mark in the desert. This will be my sixth summer in the Gobi. Mongolia has proven so rich in fossils, I know that each year there will be great new finds to be made. outside of Ulaanbaatar. The team's destination in the Western Gobi is a minimum of three days driving. A Mad Max journey over hot, dusty plains and through mountain passes. after months of overland travel, Roy Chapman Andrews' motor caravan came across a strange and beautiful place 
of eroded canyons and sandstone towers. The late afternoon sun seemed to set the rocks on fire. Andrews named it the Flaming Cliffs. Here they would come upon one of the greatest repositories of dinosaur remains ever found. More than 80 years later, the Flaming Cliffs are still a fabled and productive destination for dinosaur hunters. To find dinosaurs, paleontologists must first look in the right places. They know that fossils are preserved in certain rock deposits. The only tool they need at first is keen eyesight. Tiny white bone fragments on the surface hint at what could be an entire dinosaur buried below. There's a lot of bone in here. Always a good place. Hey, come check this out. Oh, what? An egg. With decades of experience, Mike and Mark can oh, readily yeah, spot right. fossils and identify them. That's, that's a nice, that's a nice For grad students Alan and Amy, time in the field is the best way to develop their own skills. This is my first time going to the Gobi with Mark and everyone. I'm really excited and happy to be part of a tradition that goes back to Roy Chapman Andrews. I don't know, where to you? The Gobi expeditions are a collaboration with the Mongolian Academy of Sciences. This year, Mongolian grad student Bold Raminjin joins the team. My father is a paleontologist, and when he first showed me a giant skeleton found in Mongolia, I couldn't believe such animals really lived. I have loved finding fossils ever since. Judy! Move, horses. Today, after only a few hours of searching, the team uncovers a fossilized skull. Julia is quick to recognize it as that of a large armored dinosaur. It's called a Pinacosaurus. It was sort of the heavy tank of its day. With experience, we can visualize what fossils like this would have looked like in life. Pinacosaurus and its relatives, like this Tarkia, were built for defense. Their backs bristled with rows of hard bony plates and spikes. Even their eyelids were armored, and their tails ended in a massive bony club. This one is from Boginta. One of Tarkia's few enemies was the ferocious Tarbosaurus, whose bones have also been found in the Gobi. Yeah, actually, it's the proximal end. It's very nice. You can see how it's still hollow here, just like a bird bone is. Tarbosaurus was a close relative of Tyrannosaurus rex, and it was a top predator. It was 30 feet long and weighed five tons. It had a supersized bite with razor-sharp teeth nearly six inches long. Scientists have debated for many years how fast or slow these big predators were. This scale model of a T. rex skeleton reveals how a massive two-legged or bipedal dinosaur might have moved. As they walked, they shifted their entire weight from leg to leg, as humans do. Their large tails helped to balance them. Their legs were directly beneath their hips, allowing them to carry more weight and move faster. Dinosaurs like T. rex could have reached speeds up to 25 miles per hour, faster than an average human could run. Tarbosaurus was at the top of the food chain in the area of Asia that is now the Gobi Desert. But Tarkia was no wimp and could use its tail club to cripple or kill an attacker.
the 1920s, the Andrews expeditions found a number of new dinosaurs. Their most important discovery wasn't a ferocious predator. It was something rather small, but one of the great dinosaur finds of all time. They found the first dinosaur eggs, lying in large round nests in the ground. This amazing find confirmed that dinosaurs actually laid eggs. Andrews and his team believed the eggs belonged to Protoceratops because they found so many of these dinosaurs in the Gobi. About the size of sheep, Protoceratops had a distinctive head shield and a hook-like beak. On top of one nest, they made a puzzling discovery. The skeleton of a bird-like meat-eating dinosaur definitely not a protoceratops. They concluded that it was a predator that had been raiding the nest. It was named Oviraptor, meaning egg thief. It took 70 years to prove they were wrong. In 1993, Mark Norell made an extraordinary find in the Gobi, a fossilized dinosaur embryo. We discovered that it was the embryo of a very close relative of Oviraptor. In other words, the dinosaur was not stealing the eggs, it was a good parent brooding them. The discovery of Oviraptors preserved on their nests sheds new light on these dinosaurs. They sat on their eggs, just like modern birds. Many of the Gobi dinosaurs are in a remarkable state of preservation, undisturbed by scavengers or damaged by erosion. Not only oviraptors, but many others, like the fighting dinosaurs. And even a nest full of barely hatched baby protoceratops. How did they die so suddenly and remain so intact? Until recently, it was thought that sandstorms buried these creatures. New evidence suggests a much more spectacular scenario. During this expedition, heavier than normal rainfall flooded parts of the Gobi. According to a new theory, water and sand dunes played a dramatic part in preserving dinosaur remains. Scientists now believe that every few centuries, rainstorms of immense power swept down on this arid world with catastrophic effect. The inhabitants could not have known what was coming. A pair of speedy, aggressive velociraptors were on the hunt and approached a large group of nesting oviraptors but on this day, unaware that they are chasing their last meal. become fossilized when they are quickly buried, protecting them from weather and predators. Over time, living tissues decay and bone is replaced by minerals seeping in from the surrounding sediment. But bones are not the only clues to the understanding of dinosaur life. New evidence is revolutionizing our view of dinosaurs like Velociraptor. Long thought to be leathery skinned or scaly, Velociraptor was in fact covered with feathers. And though it could not fly, it had the same S-shaped neck, four-toed feet, and many other features that birds have today.
Julia Clark is using the very latest evidence to study one of nature's most enduring mysteries, the origin of birds, and how feathers develop to give them the power of flight. Understanding the evolution of flight is to me one of the most interesting questions in dinosaur paleontology. Dozens of new dinosaur species are being discovered in the north of China. They're preserved in extremely fine volcanic ash, and for the first time we can see distinct impressions of feathers associated with their delicate bones, confirming to us that non-flying dinosaurs were the first feathered creatures on Earth. But at least one group of dinosaurs like this Confuciusornis recently found in China did develop the body structure and kind of feathers that allowed them to take to the sky. Sixty-five million years ago, dinosaurs disappeared from Earth or so it was long thought. Today we know that the dinosaurs are not all gone. One line of dinosaurs survives, and we call them birds. Mongolia is a great place to find some of the last non-flying dinosaurs that lived on Earth. But to go back further in time and find the earliest dinosaurs, scientists come to places like the high desert badlands of New Mexico. The land has a rich and turbulent human history of Pueblo people, Spanish conquistadors, cowboys, and cattle rustlers but it has an even richer history of life stretching back over 200 million years. It is one of the few places in the world where rock layers span the age of dinosaurs. The deeper the layer, the older the rock. At the top, rock from the Cretaceous. Below that, further back in time, the gold and white cliffs of the Jurassic. And near the bottom, the oldest red Triassic badlands, when dinosaurs first appeared. having a busy summer. In addition to trekking across the Gobi, he is working with his fellow grad student, Sterling Nesbitt, on a new excavation at a place called Ghost Ranch. Yeah, this up the next Badlands? Yeah, definitely. This looks like it's gonna be real nice. Sterling grew up in the Southwest, reading about dinosaurs and the amazing discoveries that have been made at Ghost Ranch. I've spent every summer since I was 15 digging for dinosaurs. I've always wanted to be a paleontologist, so the chance to excavate at Ghost Ranch is a dream come true. Ghost Ranch was explored in the 1940s by paleontologists from the American Museum. They discovered rich fossil beds 220 million years old with hundreds of bones of a small early dinosaur now considered a kind of blueprint for the carnivorous dinosaurs yet to come. Named Coelophysis, it grew to nine feet long and weighed 100 pounds. Its size and leg bones indicate an ability to run fast. On each hand, it had three clawed fingers for catching and holding prey. Large eye sockets suggest very acute vision. It all adds up to a small but effective predator.
Pursuing his graduate research, Sterling became intrigued by the dozens of unexamined fossils at the museum, collected from Ghost Ranch in the 1940s. He knew that not all dinosaur discoveries are made in the field. Each expedition collects fossils and brings them back for later examination. But some remain in museum catacombs for decades, unopened. It's amazing. When you walk through these catacombs filled with tens of thousands of dinosaur bones, some still wrapped in plaster, and you realize that they were dug up by really famous paleontologists. To get the chance to see what they saw for the first time in 70 or 80 years is pretty incredible. It took me a few months to prepare and remove the bones from the old plaster cast, but by comparing it to Coelophysis directly, I very quickly realized that this was not a dinosaur at all. It was actually an animal new to science. Hey guys, preparations are finally done on this. It isn't often that a grad student discovers a new species. And when his find captures the attention of leading paleontologists like Mike and Mark, wow, it's a memorable day. Yeah, wow, look at this ankle, too. It's really nicely preserved. Yeah, it's a totally new animal for a ghost ranch. Sterling named this new creature Effigia, the Latin word for ghost in honor of Ghost Ranch. It was up to nine feet long and weighed about 200 pounds. It really looks like a dinosaur, but one bone tells a different story. The ankle is that of an ancient relative of crocodiles, telling us that Ephigia was a member of the crocodile group. But strangely, Ephigia walked upright on two legs. After the discovery of Ephigia, I knew I had to go to New Mexico. Looks like you have a nice Coelophysis skull here. My first stop was to see Alex Downs, curator of paleontology at Ghost Ranch, who's been working for years on Coelophysis. The eyes were here. And this is one of the few places in the world where fossilized bones of early dinosaurs and their closest relatives are found together. There's a somewhat larger one here. This is the tip of the snout, and we can see the teeth here. And we have a beautiful skull. It's just missing one tooth. That's great. For grad students like Sterling and Allen, who work in classrooms and labs most of the year, the opportunity to spend a few weeks on a hot, dusty hunt for dinosaurs is what they live for. Got, that was warm yesterday. The new dig at Ghost Ranch is a joint project of the University of California, Berkeley, and the American Museum. Once the overlying tons of rock are removed, the grad students soon realize they've come upon a huge fossil site. Around this block. I think there's going to be some more theropod material in it. Oh, cool. Yeah. How about you? Uh, there's a humerus of, uh, looks like a Silosaurid, one of those dinosaur relatives over here. For paleontologists, great work is often accomplished yeah, really nice. while lying down on the job. It's right in that layer between the clay and the conglomerate. Oh, that's going to be great. Have you guys got anything over there, Stir? Yeah, there's a really nice Spidosaur calcanium. We hope to piece together a picture of which creatures lived in the late Triassic. No, it looks like it's just isolated. Is it that lower conglomerate? Yeah. What their surroundings were like, and where they fit into the family tree of reptiles. When dinosaurs first appeared, this part of North America was a very different environment. The region had a wet, tropical climate. Tall evergreen-like trees grew along the banks of streams and rivers flowing through a vast floodplain. All in all, it seems to have been a rich habitat for life. The question is, how did early dinosaurs interact with other animals? Reptiles appeared on Earth before dinosaurs. 
Dinosaurs are reptiles too, but over 200 million years ago, they branched off of the evolutionary line leading towards crocodiles. Epigea was an early crocodile relative. Coelophysis was one of the first dinosaurs. Undoubtedly, they came across one another in the canyons and forests of the Triassic Southwest. prospect of a new dinosaur discovery has brought Mike, Julie, and Mark to Ghost Ranch to see for themselves. Yeah, here's the lower leg bone. Here's the other one. Uh -huh. This is the fibula, tibia, and the other tibia. And part of the pelvis is coming out here. Right, so the skeleton is sort of smeared across this direction. And part of the femora. This area is a little bit... The number of fossils here is staggering. Over. Layers and layers of animals are piled up in this mass burial place, which seems to have been a sharp bend in an ancient riverbed. What happened here? The high desert landscape is dramatic, and so are the torrential rain squalls that can turn dry canyons into raging rivers of death, as they must have done back in the age of dinosaurs. In Arizona's Petrified Forest National Park, 200 million year old fossilized trees are reappearing as the ground erodes around them, evidence of the ancient floods that violently uprooted and buried them. Though now extinct, these giant trees of the Triassic were similar to the Pacific redwoods of today. But it wasn't just trees that got swept up in ancient floods. Early dinosaurs like Coelophysis were always on the defensive. They lived in a world still dominated by larger reptiles, like this 1,500-pound Postosuchus. Floods washed the drowned bodies of reptiles and dinosaurs into concentrated deposits. Perhaps this is why Sterling and team are finding so many in one area. When they locate a skeleton, they carefully excavate around it, then cover it up with a jacket made of plaster and toilet paper, which always comes in handy out in the field. This protects the fossils so that they can be transported to the lab where the bones will be delicately separated from the rock. This summer's dig at Ghost Ranch has been productive beyond our greatest expectations. We found something really exciting, and we think it may be a new dinosaur. Uh, all right, get ready. Switch. I'm pull okay, I'm pull It's thrilling to find a dinosaur we've never known before that hasn't seen the light of day for over 200 million years. It will take many months to determine what it looked like and how important it is, but it will surely change our views of how dinosaurs rose to dominance. Oh, excellent. Preservation looks really nice. It's preparing very nicely in this area. There are things the fossil record cannot preserve. 
that we may never know, such as the color of dinosaurs or precisely what sounds they made. But year by year, we learn more about them. Some dinosaurs traveled in herds and hunted in packs. We know that they made nests, protected their eggs, probably cared for their young. From some fossils, we've learned who were the hunters and who were the hunted. That feathers first appeared on non-flying dinosaurs before birds evolved. And that some dinosaurs live on as modern birds. Those who love to contemplate the secrets of the history of life must come to places like Ghost Ranch and the Flaming Cliffs. It is hard to imagine our own human sense of who we are and where we come from without the records buried beneath our feet. For young paleontologists like Sterling and Allen, the adventure is just beginning. Three quarters of a century ago, Roy Chapman Andrews discovered a whole new world of dinosaurs beneath the flaming cliffs. Camping in this magical place, he wrote in his diary of a sense of having traveled back in time. It's a feeling shared by paleontologists then and now. In the evening shadows, the rocks took on fantastic shapes. We seem to be living in the world of a long-gone yesterday. At any moment, I imagined that dinosaurs might wander to the doorways of our tents. We have discovered less than 2% of all the dinosaur species that once lived. Imagine all those dinosaurs out there, yet to be found.